Alzheimer's is a devastating disease. It impacts more people than just the patients and has a significant financial impact on the families of those afflicted. According to the Alzheimer's Association's 2010 Alzheimer's Disease Facts and Figures Report, there are 5.3 million people in this country living with Alzheimer's disease today, and it has become the seventh leading cause of death. Here with me this morning is Dr. Richard Isaacson from the Miller School of Medicine at the University of Miami to discuss Alzheimer's disease and brain nutrition. Good morning, Dr. Isaacson. Good to see you this morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. What is Alzheimer's and, and what can we do to prevent it? Right. So Alzheimer's disease is a progressive brain disease. It's basically where a patient slowly begins to have short-term memory problems, losing keys, losing items, forgetting dates. Um, these problems progress over time and then it really involves different parts of the brain. Uh, thinking skills are impacted, sleep schedules become off, and even the behaviors uh, can, can get worse and even people can have depression. And I know that science has discovered problems with brain nutrition or chemistry associated with Alzheimer's disease. What does this mean? Explain this to our viewers. Right. As the brain ages, things change. So most commonly we know about different pathologies in the brain or proteins in the brain like amyloid or tau. But one of the avenues that is really yet to be fully explored is something called glucose hypometabolism. And what that means is that the brain doesn't use glucose or sugar as well as it used to. So what we can do is we can supplement the brain's fuel source by using ketone bodies. Mm -hmm. And you know, Alzheimer's disease is, is also known as the, the long goodbye. And I can only imagine how devastating it has to be for, for family. And we're going to talk to a family coming up here in just a bit. But it is progressive. It does get worse. Right. And the goal with treatments for Alzheimer's disease and the goal with any therapy is to try to put a brakes uh, on that decline. Mm -hmm. And what we can do is I advocate for early diagnosis because the earlier you diagnose, the earlier you treat, and the earlier you can treat, the better the patient will do. So I advocate for patients to get informed, see a physician, and get the full medical workup. You know, one of the things we talked about a little bit ago was, was the toll that it takes on a family. It's not just the patient, but it affects all their loved ones, everybody around them. And so I want you to stay with us, Dr. Isaacson, because when we come back, We'll talk to a couple who are experiencing Alzheimer's disease firsthand and will discover how they are living with it. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking to Dr. Richard Isaacson about the effects of nutrition on brain function on Alzheimer's patients. Joining us now is Laura and Jay Jones. Jay was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at a young age, and he and Laura have an interesting story to share with us this morning. And first of all, Laura, Jay, I want to say thank you so much for being on the show to share your story this morning. How did you arrive to the point where it was like, this is more than just kind of everyday forgetfulness, and, and you knew you had to go see a doctor? For about a year and a half, there were some behavioral issues that were troubling me. Uh, but really, the point of, of awareness became when my son was graduating from high school, and we were, of course, having a graduation party. And Jay asked me many times every day, are we having a party? When is the party? And uh, you know, it was at that point that I really realized something was wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is, uh, Jay, what is your background, His, your, your business? What, what do you do? Um, I've been uh, uh, um, a broker for uh, uh, yacht. Uh, hmm? yacht broker. Yeah, yacht broker. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting when you know that that's the background and you're used to just remembering everything and everything's like this. You knew something was not right, didn't you, Laura? I did, but but honestly, I thought it was something was wrong with me. I really did. Really? I, I really did, because um, it's elusive in the beginning, but um, but something in your gut tells you this is not normal. He would come home and go right upstairs and take a nap when he got home from work, or uh, he was extremely combative. I knew something was wrong, but I really had no clue. And um, it, to me, because he was working and I wasn't spending a lot of time with him, I didn't really see the memory issues. In retrospect, I look back now and I think his stress was the difficulty that he was having at work, but all I was seeing was the manifestation of the stress. I wasn't really seeing the cause of the stress because we weren't together enough. And you're using a product now called Exonin, and, and, and how does that work? How has it worked for you? The first things that I saw out of uh, Exona was that he seemed more independent. And for us, it's very important for him to maintain his independence, um, you know, for me as well as him, because I work full time. Mm. So uh, I need to trust where he is and what he's doing 
during the day and uh, and he needs to feel like there's no one running his life and uh, he rides his bike to the gym it's about uh, a mile or two one way and uh, you know he's perfectly capable of doing that he goes to the gym by himself he works out he gets a little bit of time alone can walk the dog things like that it's it's important so doctor let me bring you into this what is sure. exona how does it work sure so exona is a medical food indicated for the metabolic processes associated with alzheimer's okay. disease so earlier we were talking about how valuable nutrition is and about all the different uh, problems with alzheimer's and one of those problems is glucose hypometabolism mm -hmm. and that means the brain can't utilize sugar or use glucose. Uh, so what Exona does is it provides an alternative fuel source for the brain uh, using ketone bodies instead of glucose. How important are the results you're seeing using Exona to you in terms of changing your life? It's critical to me because it's very difficult to live with Alzheimer's. Uh, it's very difficult to monitor someone's every move. And uh, it's difficult for the caregiver as well as the patient. You know, we have a seven-year-old daughter as well. So the independence is really what we're hanging on to the most. And, you know, I, I see a difference in him. I really do. There, you know, it's, there's not a lot of hope on the market right now mm. long term. So... We really want to extend the quality of life for as long as we can until they have something, you know, really powerful in play. Um. Well, just and even just watching you guys, it's really emotional and touching to me because I can see how much you love each other. And just to come on the show and share your story just means a lot to us. So thank you so much for being with us on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Isaacson. Thank you. And to learn more about medical foods and Alzheimer's disease, visit about-exona.com.